Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger, and today we are chatting with my good friend, Jonathan Bricker. Jonathan has launched a private label salad dressing. It's his dad's recipe. They together um, have launched it on Amazon. They started with the farmer's markets and they have it in local stores in the Indianapolis area. So in this episode, we talk about how they got into stores. We talk about how they launched their salad dressing on Amazon and are on page one. And during all the month of February, they were at the top of page one. He said they fluctuate back and forth different spots, but they sell hundreds of bottles of salad dressing on Amazon per day. So if you were interested in private label, how to launch a brand strategies, private label strategies related to PPC, um, Amazon's pay-per-click giveaways, and just everything regarding how to get your product ranked on Amazon, this episode is for you. Jonathan has an awesome story and you're going to love it. Here it is. Jonathan, welcome to Streams of Income Radio, man. Appreciate you being on with me. Hey, I'm glad to be here, man. It's going to be awesome. Thank you again for coming to our Legends Family Reunion last weekend and sharing about proven product partnering and everything you were uh, doing. I understand that was your first conference in our community. It was, and it was a blast. So good to meet so many people. A lot of them are your people you just see making Facebook posts and commenting. and then Right. Um, so good to put faces with names, but there were some people who... I've dealt with and even done business deals with or, or my coach that I had two years ago and never met in person. So, right. um, you know, in the online space, you can do business with people for, for years and never meet up. So uh, it was great. Totally to get to hang can. Out Is there anything I didn't ask you? We didn't even think about asking this, but let me just ask you and if we can edit this out if you, if it's a curveball, anything happened at the event that you're like, um, or did you meet somebody or have a conversation that, uh, like, wow, this, it made the whole thing worth it to you or anything that like, uh, you just can't duplicate or replicate in a virtual setting. Yeah. I mean, just the pure networking side of it. Yeah. I mean, the, the sessions are great, but also you would do so many awesome webinars in the legends group and whatnot. And with pack and everything that it's, um, you know, you can get the content online. You can't get the relationship. So That's just right. hanging out, going out to dinner, getting to talk with people. And yeah, definitely there were, um, there were relationships made that found people that they had expertise and things I'm wanting to grow in. And yeah. I had things that I could help them with. And we've connected since, uh, yeah, I've already had multiple, my messenger was starting to blow up kind of post oh conferences. Gosh. Everybody, everybody was, uh, you know, following up with in-person conversations that we had. And that's awesome. Yeah. yeah so it, your, it was uh, so, so fruitful. Yeah. For your company, people wanting help with their products. Yeah. So some of it was about us working with, with brands on Amazon. Some of it was me learning uh, some more of the reselling stuff. And uh, cause I kind of, we'll get to that in a minute. I kind of came yeah. into this uh, business backwards from a lot of yeah. people, but. That's okay. Uh, you can go at it in different directions. Most people do start at the arbitrage, um, but you went in private label. So let's talk about your story. Just tell me who is Jonathan Bricker? Hi, I'm Jonathan. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm married. My wife and I, next week, we married 12 years. And um, congratulations. Got, thank you. We're 12 years. We got years married at 21. And um, we've got three kiddos, uh, basically almost two, four, and six, uh -huh. one and a half, four, and six. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, life is pretty full. My background before this had nothing to do with a, a technology or e commerce what, whatsoever. Uh, my background before this is I was a pastor at a church. I live on the south side of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the staff pastors, I was a uh, worship pastor. So I did all the music. We had a volunteer team of I don't know, around 40 or 50 people, a pool of rotating musicians. So uh -huh. I would schedule all the music and schedule the bands and and do that. And then as um, as I, I grew in that, I began you know teaching and speaking and whatnot. And um, 
Then um, probably about six years ago, my role kind of evolved away from the, the music side and more towards what's, what's called like an executive pastor. So mm-hmm. overseeing all the staff and more of the strategy side. You're running the church. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much, right? The stuff, man, but, yeah. yeah, but it, it, it's a blast. You know, there was so many awesome people uh, I got to work with and, and it was family. And, um, and so a couple of years ago, there was some uh, things just going on in, in our lives. And we had decided, my wife and I decided that I wanted to step out of that role, which I envisioned myself like not only retiring from ministry, but in that particular church, that context. So yeah. it was a kind of a BC AD pivot point in my life. <laughs> it was a big deal to, um, yeah. to change that trajectory. And sure. we, we knew that we needed um, to make a change. And so, yeah, we didn't know what was next. It was a big, big faith step for us. Big yeah. Had you been change. selling, doing anything uh, e-commerce wise at that point when you knew you needed to make a change? Not e-commerce. So what's interesting is that th- what I'm doing now isn't why I left, but um, I saw God open so many doors into this direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was an entrepreneurial bent. So mm-hmm. probably four years or so before I left, um, our family had started a brand. My dad's a chef and he's, um, he used to own a business, catering business. But then for the last 20 years or so, he's a um, chef instructor at a local community college here. He oversees the whole culinary program. But on the side, he made a line of salad dressings that were like clean label, healthy, you know, yeah. salad dressings, vinaigrettes. And uh, we were selling them at farmer's markets and stuff. It was kind of one of those kind of um, stereotypical family business stories. We were literally sitting around the kitchen table and dad had made this dressing that every time he makes it and brings it to parties, like people were just raving about it. Yeah. And I said, dad, we should, we should start bottling this and selling this. Wow. And uh, they're like, really, really? Do you, do you think so? And um, it was like two months later, it was right at the beginning of farmer's market season. It was really crude. We had, we like, he would make them and put them in like Mason jars and <laughs> yeah. with like poor marketing, no good labels, sure. but we started selling them in farmer's markets and then it scaled from there. Uh, so again, we're all working. He has a 50, 60 hour week job and I did too in ministry and uh-huh. we're on the side every, you know, weekends going He's to making it small markets. batch and we're going to farmer's markets and, <laughs> and we were getting into some even grocery stores lo- locally, like in the uh-huh. Indy area central yeah. indiana and in places like target and walmart and not no walmart i'm sorry oh target goodness. and kroger kroger locally uh yeah not walmart we do we do now sell on walmart.com but um but and we would sell it to restaurants by the gallons and stuff and so that business wow. kind of in the background had been growing and so whenever uh whenever i decided to to leave my role at the church we were processing what's next and and i honestly had no clue we just we knew we did want to take a sabbatical. So I took th- three months off. That was awesome. A, a refreshing and good time. Mm-hmm. But um, basically I thought, well, I could either go to try to find a job, work at a bank or something. Yeah. And, you know, if I have to do that, I'll do that. Right. I have nothing against anybody who mm-hmm. has to do that to provide for their family. Sure. But we, we had some savings. And so we said, you know what, let's take this risk and let me see if I can kind of stoke this business and, That's awesome. and get it going. So it wasn't like I had this hairbrand idea. Here's this new widget. Right. I want to get going with it. It had some proven history behind yeah. it. And um, so in that season, I thought, well, how can I best grow our brand? And I thought, I, I, let me figure out how to sell this thing on Amazon. I don't even know what led to that. So you're like, why did I think that? Because nothing about, the only thing I was like something on Facebook Marketplace that was like extra in my closet or something, yeah. right? Like, you know, garage sale kind of stuff. Um, but that's whenever I got into kind of this community, I, um, somebody introduced me to Jim Cockrum's podcast mm-hmm. and, um, I bought his, the proven Amazon course and started yep. to learn all about Amazon. Um, but through that lens of trying to say, I want to get my brand on Amazon. I want to sell this brand. And I knew, you know, knew nothing about keywords or listing building or anything, <laughs> right? How, how the, and the cost structure, how does this work? How is this profitable? Like, oh my gosh, there's all these fees that come out and, yeah. and you know, looking at that. Um, so it was kind of interesting too. Um, right after I bought that course, Jim sent out this kind of follow-up email and, uh, there's a video, a little email he made and said, Hey, yeah. Jonathan, thanks for buying the course. And I thought it was a, an awesome touch. I mean, this, yeah. yeah, I really came to appreciate him and his character Sure, guy who's uh, excellent in business and loves God. But, um, I, I replied to him and I said, Hey, um, I picked up through your podcast. You live in the same city as I do. I didn't even know that when right. I started listening to the podcast. I said, could I ever take you out for coffee? 
<laughs> and he replied and said, I recognize your picture on Facebook. We go to the same chiropractor. Oh my gosh. And, uh, <laughs> and so he, we ended up going out for coffee, he and my wife and I. And in hindsight, I didn't realize I was so new into the community. I didn't realize even the, probably the naivety of me asking that and hearing your story of how in the past, how, you know, yeah. you, it was a big investment for you to it get was. to meet up with him for lunch and yeah, and you got it for you got it for just coffee. That stinks. Yeah. I think he even <laughs> probably paid for my coffee. <laughs> right. Oh man. <laughs> no. Uh, just, but so I just you know that was obviously just a total God thing. As I was in my exit, you know, not knowing what's happening next, and um, that was a big, uh, big step for us, and just a um, huge sign, I think, of God directing us. Just the, yeah. him being one of many relationships. Uh, in this direction. So, um, yeah, so from there, I actually ended up just getting coaching because I knew I needed help. I could, this is not my space. So, yeah. um, Nathan Bailey was my coach and he helped me make all of my listings and kind of crash course everything on Amazon for, for this product line. Right. So, um, then yeah, we got up and running and again, it was another sign. I think of good Scott's provision, how, we got this ranking and we got the product moving and we were selling more than that than we were at the farmer's market. So wow. it became our primary revenue stream. Oh my goodness. Selling this on Amazon. And which is great because in that season, after, for whatever, I didn't have a real job, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I was doing so many farmer's markets and then I got to where, hey, wait a second. I can sell more in a day on Amazon mm -hmm. sitting here in my office than I can, you know, lugging yes. out tables and tents and, you know, doing all that. So, um, not that that's bad. We still do that, but I'm trying to focus more of my time on growing the online side of it. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. So that was a, a key part of that was uh, working with the coach, helping me, you know, know what I don't know. Right. And uh, launched our brand on Amazon and the relationships that formed even from that were, were crucial. But, and you um, got to meet kind of in a nutshell. In, uh, last weekend, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. So he was my coach and for uh, two years ago and, I, and I've dealt with him now on other projects since then. And yeah. And yeah, I finally got to meet him for the first time. So you had to room with him for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I got to room with him. And I found out in person, he is just as much of a talker as he is online. Right. Oh man. He's a wealth of knowledge. My goodness. Oh yes. Oh, he was in that room. Um, for the, I don't know if you were in, in there at the time when Leanna got up and said, um, you basically asked who, who has been selling, a certain amount of time started with like, you know, two years, four years, five years and go down the list. And she got down to like 2010 and that's when I started. And she goes 2009 and everybody else had to sit down and Nathan was still standing up. He'd been, he's been selling since 2007. And when, yeah. when he could only sell books on Amazon. So he knows what he's talking that's about. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. And so what was awesome is, you know, through his help, I was able to get it to where it's moving and I'm understanding yeah. ads and all, all that stuff. And yeah. uh, it positioned us so that whenever the pandemic hit, we lost all of our trade shows. We lost all of our mm. farmers markets. And it didn't really matter too much. <laughs> no, it didn't. We, I mean, if we didn't have this uh, e-commerce stream, like we could have really halted the business. I mean, luckily yeah. it's the side thing for my dad. It's not his livelihood, but I mean, sure. it was a, um, yeah. Amazon's what, being, yeah, is what carried us through that and sales picked wow. up. <laughs> People started shopping for groceries online more. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did your, did, so your business actually grew in 2020 because of it was a grocery item? Yeah. So get this, whenever, whenever I was making the listings, the search volume for the term salad dressing, it would get around 7,000 searches a month. Okay. And this past, like uh, last time I looked at it was a couple months ago. It's getting more like 65,000. No way. A month. Yes. I mean, so that's like, you know, almost 10x the search volume that's happening. We oh, haven't had 10x the sales. There's uh, There's been other people coming into the market and sure. stuff, but it's it's definitely picked up. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. There's a whole lot of uh, follow-up questions. I want to just thinking that I, I hear uh, the, the fun part of this, doing this uh, podcast is that I can hear people behind me thinking, asking all these questions. You know, I, I vision I visualize these folks, you know, wanting all these follow up questions of things that they uh, that spark from when you when you say something. So you mentioned a lot of stuff that I think people are going to ask about. But um, let's see where to. So you literally you jumped out with you had no no idea what you're going to do, but you, you, you had some savings 
And so I probably wouldn't recommend that to most people. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, not like, at all. I quit my job yeah. and then let's not know what but you, <laughs> you knew the Lord was telling you to do that. And so you, like you said, you stepped out in faith and, um, and it worked out for you because you were obedient. Um, but you yeah. had no, no prospects. You had no idea what you're going to do. That's pretty bold. Yeah. And honestly, I, in the past, as I would work with people, I would counsel them against doing that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's some circumstances that, um, and too, like you said, hearing from hearing from God, you have to follow yeah, that. And absolutely. Um, so yeah, it was a big step. And and we knew we had positioned ourselves. We were pretty big Dave Ramsey fans, so we had no debt. That's awesome. Uh, we had very little need in terms of monthly income. So it's kind of like, yeah. and coming from ministry, it's not like I left a high paying job either. So right. like, <laughs> right. if, if, if I can't make this work, I have no business doing this business. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's awesome. Um, well, tell me. Oh, I want to ask you about the. Um, I know there's people want to know how you got into the, even just the local stores. That's impressive to me in local restaurants. I imagine it's just picking up the phone and finding it. But tell me about that process. If I have a, a private label product, that's a brand that whether it's grocery or whatever it is, what's that first mm-hmm. step? How do you even know who to call? How did you guys essentially yeah. get, get that salad dressing into stores? Yeah, that's a great question. So obviously this is pretty niche specific, but in our in our case, th- there's there's all these different business guilds, right? So we're we're in Indiana and there's this group that's actually put on by the Department of Agriculture called Indiana Grown. And it's an initiative to promote local farmers and artisans and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we had gotten connected quite a bit with them and they they were basically advocating to some of the grocery stores carry oh, local foods. Awesome. So it was through a partnership with them. Um, yeah. That, that helped. Now, once you got in, we, uh, we found out getting into the stores actually wasn't incredibly hard with that kind of a partnership. Staying mm. on the shelf is hard. They have to have so many turns mm. and, you know, it's, it's honestly more challenging whenever you're sitting on a shelf next to a, a bottle of craft salad dresser sure. and it's selling for less than what our ingredients cost us. Right. Um, you know, because of their volume of scale and ours is like a premium quality health food type sure. thing. Yeah, um, it's pretty hard to stay and to compete. And so we, we've we're still in some stores. We've dropped a lot of them, partly because the work you have to be in there sampling all those kinds of stuff. And we just yeah. found on on that. whenever you're t- taking it online, you can find your audience online. And yeah, there was much lower hanging fruit. So I just yes. shifted my efforts at that point. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So you have the option of doing the farmer's market style inside the stores And just Mm -hmm. trying to, it's retail. You're talking to people, hey, you want to try this salad dressing and hope that they (laughs) buy. And even if they do, they buy one and then they're not going to buy it for a few more weeks. And so you can just Mm -hmm. sell so much faster on Amazon. Yeah. Wow. Totally. That's awesome. Um, Uh, Is your, at one point, your salad dressing was on page one for the term salad dressing. Is that still the case? Uh, I haven't checked it today. It's it, with a high volume term like that, like uh-huh. 60,000 or so. Yeah, that's, in, the, that's the, incredible. The ranks are always changing. Oh, for oh, yeah. sure. Well, I mean, and they're all changing. So I might pop in there one day and we're position two uh, yeah. on page one. And the other day we're on page three. So, I mean, it's a, yeah. it's pretty volatile whenever you get that high volume. But um, uh-huh. there was, a, I think back in February, it was like a whole solid month. We were staple on page one and we were moving intense amount of, oh my gosh. can you give me an idea <laughs> of the numbers that you're moving uh, when you're on a yeah, top of page we, one, you don't yeah, have to go back um, and look at your reports or anything. Just kind of guess if you remember back how many a day we're selling or. Yeah. I, I can't remember offhand. I mean, it would have been, and we're talking about hundreds of bottles of dressing a day going oh. out. Um, <laughs> But part of that, part yeah, part of, part of that because we we sell like you know one packs, two packs, three packs, six yeah. packs, and oh, stuff. So yes. like so, our our six pack is actually what got ranked, uh, which is our highest price point item. That's pretty. It was pretty yeah. interesting. But oh. yeah, we were moving like you know, over a hundred of just the six packs in that month. Um, <sighs> My God. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> it was a yeah neat volume happening. But really, the the ones and two packs those move quickly because they're lower yeah. price point, and so sure. And actually. The way the cost structures work, those are better margins anyway. But. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. So right now you're selling on Amazon. You're still in some stores. Are you guys still doing the farmer's markets? The company is. And okay. I, I'm trying to make myself the backup. I'm doing Good. one this weekend because I'm training somebody. So sure. I'm, uh, you know, as you're, 
the way too I set it up is I started out saying I want to learn how to help this my parents' business, but uh, I knew through what Jim Cochran's group is teaching of this model of the product partnering and working mm -hmm. with other brands. Mm -hmm. And so structurally, I actually set it up that way with my parents, knowing that I kind of like that model in mind. Yeah. So yeah. what that means financially is that I get a percentage of what they make from Amazon. Yes. Okay. Um, and okay. so they were kind of set up as my first client, technically, awesome. uh, is how that is. Yeah. Yeah, so I know you don't have to tell me your, your arrangement with them, but what's a typical model? Because you may have given them a sweet deal because they're your parents. But um, if, if I had a brand, I want to talk real quick after this, I want to talk about how to launch a brand, how you've done that, how you got to page one, because that's that's incredible mm -hmm. to me. But um, if I had a, a private label brand and I come to you and say, Jonathan, I want you to um, partner with me. I don't know anything about Amazon. I, you are the expert. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what does that look like? Cause I'm the folks that are listening to this, a lot of them are Amazon sellers and they don't realize how valuable their knowledge really is. They, they don't many times don't see themselves as, as experts, but they are. And so mm -hmm. you can come alongside companies who know they need to be on Amazon and just don't know what to do. And you can make a, you know, a, a healthy percentage of their profit. So what does an, a yeah. typical arrangement like that look like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and honestly, doing the first deal with my parents was so helpful because it actually uh, helped force me to craft a good win-win deal, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, that's my parents, right? So, right. Whatever, right. so we actually, it's a, I used the same kind of arrangement for everybody else. I didn't give them a sweetheart deal. I okay. found what, what, what's a deal that, uh, that I would give to my mom yeah. and, and that's still profitable for me mm -hmm. that's good. and structure that for my other clients. So the way most of them work, I've learned a lot uh, after doing this model for couple of years now. Um, but the, it's mainly commission based. So we pay, we negotiate a revenue share, mm -hmm. um, sometime 10 to 20% of their payout from Amazon. So net of all of Amazon fees, if they get $10,000 paid out from Amazon, depending on the account, I'll get between 10 to 20% of that. Nice. Um, I've, I've learned along the way to put a retainer as a floor because mm -hmm. And the front end of that process, and if you ask for somebody who's, if you're launching a brand, you might not make anything for the first few months. Yeah. Um, and so some some brands that I was getting their products on Amazon, and I just had a, a, a revenue share without a retainer, mm. you know, you're, you're actually, those are some of the heaviest workload months, and yeah. you're getting the minimal amount of pay. So I, yeah. I learned that quickly after one client, I think I was putting in 15 hours a week just on that one client, and I think I made like. $75 a month, <laughs> with them. Wow. but over mm -hmm. time as they scale, you know, right. you know, it's easier to take something that's moving and yeah. grow it yes. than to take something from a standstill stop, start, yeah. stop and start it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like what you and Abe are going to do with, the or are doing with the cozy with, uh, mm -hmm. we actually had Paul on, on my podcast a few months ago and I'll oh. put a link to the show notes on that, but He's yeah. Okay. So guy. for those of you that are kind of new to this, um, let's say a, a product is $10 on Amazon retail. You may get six fifty seven dollars back from Amazon after they take out their fees and all that type of stuff. And so then, mm -hmm. uh, your, if it was 10%, you'd get 65 cents to 70 cents. If it was 20%, yes. you'd get like a dollar 30 to a dollar 40 per um, sale. So cool. Yes. That helps. All right. Let's talk about um, one of the last questions here. Anything else we can, you want to talk about too, we can, but uh, if people have private label products, how, what's the best way right now to get them to launch on Amazon and actually make a dent and, you know, actually get it sold? Yeah. So I guess I'd parse that out. If you already have the product in hand, there's probably one line of discussion. Sure. And then we if you're just both. thinking, yeah. And then if you're thinking, I want to go find a product to sell, there's um, uh, there's a lot more due diligence I would do on the front end sure. and try to test small because a lot of people, as you know, you've done this way, way longer than me. People waste so much money and get stuck holding inventory. And, right. Um, yeah, yeah. So but mine was, we had a product. I want to sell this on Amazon. So I guess let me yes. go that that route. Sure. would be, um, you know, don't. Don't do what I did and say and say I have no other stream of income right now. <laughs> I'm going to make this thing happen, uh, you know, because it, it, it's going to take some time to to scale that. And so, you know, you you have to learn how to do keyword research. I think there's some good trainings inside of the courses that you have that's, mm -hmm. that help with that, and to make sure your listings have the right keywords. I mean, that's that's the bulk of it. That your listings have the right keywords. Your title is keyword dense. 
uh, and not not just pack it in keywords, but makes sense to the, the customer. Yeah. And then um, the advertising part of it, you know, it's different with private label than if you're doing arbitrage. If you're arbitraging, be you know, people will do that five cent low bid auto campaign, yeah. and and that it's amazing. But you don't rank a product like that. There's a um, right. whenever and whenever for private label sellers, whenever we talk about rank. I'm not concerned as much about BSR, the best sellers rank. I'm concerned about the page rank for my keywords. So mm -hmm. like the keyword salad dressing, am I, there's uh, on desktop, there's about 30 organic positions and on mobile, there's about 14 organic positions. So you talk about I when that, I type in salad dressing on Amazon, if I'm on a desktop, yep. it's going to be, there's going to be 30 results on that page that come up and 30 different, essentially 30 different products. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yep. Yeah, that'll come up that won't say sponsored. So the sponsored right. ones, people are paying to be there, right? Right. Um, but so we know just from a lot of research that most of the sales take place on the first nine positions mm -hmm. of that page. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, the kind of joke within some private label sellers is the best place to hide a dead body is page two. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, well, and there was somebody I was talking to at the conference, a good, a good, <laughs> a good friend of yours, that um, he was had great sales going, and his page rank slipped to page two, and their sales went over in half. They cut in half mm, wow. um, by dropping a few positions. So, mm. learning how to do PPC, which is their pay per click advertising, in a way that you're targeting the right keywords, because you can also do it wrong and blow a ton of money. Sure. Uh, if you're advertising incorrectly, uh, which again, I wouldn't have known any of this had I not had a coach. So for me, that's what I needed. I needed somebody to like train me in this because I'm, I'm a sharp person, but I know nothing about any of this. So I, I need help. I'm not going to figure it out on my own. Um, yeah. Do you guys use a tool for looking up keywords? I do. Yeah. I, I use Helium 10 for that. Um, and there have tons of great training videos on how to, on how to do that. But that's Absolutely. been a pretty helpful tool. And now as I, you know, I learned the ropes in this business doing it on our own brand, um, mm -hmm. the brick house cigarettes. But then from there, I started basically just saying, Hey, I learned how to manage our account. I can help other companies too. And that very, you know, very easily led into the whole brand management product partnering mm -hmm. type business model. And um, where I, I work with a handful of other accounts and mm -hmm. build all their listings for them and do their ads and, and think through strategic growth, how to launch and it, it's had me learn a ton about supply chain management, inventory management, and yeah. all of these these things. But yeah, when you're looking at keywords, um, I know because you, you guys rank for salad dressing, which is insane. Um, but it could just be you know you could still get a lot of sales for vinaigrette salad dressing, balsamic yes. vinaigrette salad dressing, and so vinaigrette spell the 80, 80 different ways that people yeah, misspell exactly. the word vinaigrette. Yeah, you, and I know the tool. Probably the answer is the tool tells you this, but give me some numbers as far as how you decide if I have a salad dressing brand that I want to launch or that I already mm -hmm. have. Maybe I already selling. I'm doing what you're doing, and I'm looking to get it on Amazon. How do you make decision? Make a decision that I'm not going to go after salad dressing right now. That's mm -hmm. way too competitive. Yeah. Any any numbers that you know off the top of your head that you can tell the audience as far as like how to determine which ones are kind of the the best ones to go after that you actually have a it, shot at? Yeah. I mean, I, I would answer this way. It's more about the most descriptive and what we call long tail. So phrases that have three, four, five, six words in them that is true to your product. Cause mm -hmm. um, that's where you'll, you'll easily get to the top of page one for. So like mm -hmm. one of ours is a sesame ginger. So there, there's phrases that sesame ginger salad dressing. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's very niche down and it's a bit to price. And, um, and so it's a lot easier and a lot more cost effective to rank for that. So yeah, out of the gate, you don't want to start going for the main big term. Everybody's going for that. It's, it's like a bloodbath when it comes to the PPC spend. <laughs> right. but, 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 but what, what you see is if you can find all these longer tail niche keywords and you first rank for those, mm -hmm. you'll get um, broad match relevancy. Like, you know, sesame ginger salad dressing as I get top of page for that. And I convert well on that. Shoppers type that in, see my product, click it, buy it. Mm -hmm. And that happens over and over. What happens is I'll come up on the term salad dressing as well, mm -hmm. because that's a part of that phrase. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. And so that's... Um, so do you even after, target, do you target salad dressing at all? Or is that just happening because you're getting all these sales on these more long tail keywords? Yeah. 
We we do now, but like if I'm working with a brand and they're it's a different space, but let's take that same concept. I would um I wouldn't go for the big term at all up front. I would spend the first month or so just finding what are the highly relevant, even if they're small search volume, a couple hundred searches a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would dominate those lower spaces because you'll get sales yeah. and you'll get traction, and you're yeah. kind of like all the all the massive traffic and of ad spend are happening up here and you can kind of fly under the radar yeah. and pick off these little ones and uh, yeah. build momentum that way yeah and what's the um uh, the what's your ppc strategy in a couple minutes like as far as coming right at right at the gate at the beginning are you starting with uh, having amazon suggest terms and then you focus on uh, uh doing the uh the exact match after you see amazon's data or what's your guys' strategy for yeah. Yeah. ppc well I'll admittedly say my partner Abe is like the guru at this. So I'm a, I get to learn from him every day as we work together. But so <laughs> what, what we do is we first do our own keyword research, you know, mm-hmm. using the tools, but they aren't hundred percent accurate, right? They, sure. they give a pretty good read. And then we start first with actually just exact match campaigns, okay. test those keywords. Okay. And then we add in like the broad and phrase campaigns. Okay. And then after, you know, a few weeks, we'll add the auto campaigns and, and get some of those discovery searches. But mm-hmm. part of it is, at least from what he's taught me, is that, you know, Amazon, the only way it knows what your product is are the keywords that you have associated with it. Mm-hmm. And so if you just start going on everything, it's kind of confused as to what your product is. So if mm-hmm. you start with the very niche down, highly relevant, these are the terms of what my product is. Mm-hmm. And uh, it'll train and teach Amazon what your product is and show yes. it in front of the right people. Yeah. And then you can kind of go broader from there. Got it. Um, so you're starting one with a niche and then go broader. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like one of my mistakes, though, with Brickhouse or salad dressing brand is that like whenever I first started ads, I knew nothing what I was doing. And I would advertise on phrases like non-GMO. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. think of if you type it in, what all products can you find with that? It's nothing. It's so broad. It's irrelevant. Right. But I'm paying for clicks on that. Yeah. Way too broad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, awesome. Tell me about if I was coming at it from the space of I want to launch a private label and the due diligence, what's some of the due diligence you guys recommend folks do in the beginning before even trying to launch a product? Yeah. Um, so some of that will be like, if you, if you know a direction you want to go with mm-hmm. the space, right? Like what kind of niche you want to be into mm-hmm. what subcategories you want to be into. And then um, again, this is something that, my partner Abe does more so. I do more once we have the product. Sure. Let's get it ranked, right? But um, so you, you should have him on the podcast. He can do this way better than I. <laughs> yeah, he actually but, has been on. He did a, he okay. just went on a few weeks ago. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But um, I know that it's, he has a process for product validation, right? That we're, yep. and I think you, you go, it's some of the same stuff that you talk about in the private label, the easy way course of mm-hmm. uh, how many searches a month are related to this term. And then how many competitors are on that? And if, if you type in a search term and page one is completely filled with products that are exactly what that search term is, like there's, you're not going to make it. You're not going to get into that space at all. But, yeah. but if there's products that are kind of different on that first page, there's room for you to come in mm-hmm. um, into that space. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know that that's a key part. There's, there's more to it as far as the data. Oh, the sure. Website. I know Abe also talked about going into Pinterest and looking at trends and seeing what's popular yes. there and then looking to see, is there a product like this on Amazon already? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like Google, uh, Google trends also like yes. trends.google.com. You can type in keywords into there mm-hmm. and it'll, you can look at a 20 year history on what's mm-hmm. Google search result data. And that's pretty helpful. You can see, was this a, was this a fad like fidget spinners or something that's, yes. you know, that's uh, come and gone or is it something that's had is test, stands the test of time or an up and coming kind of thing. So you right. can, yeah, where that That's trend line awesome. is. Very cool. Well, tell me about, I want to know about what you guys do to your your business, but tell me first about the the giveaway process. Is that something that you also recommend people do? So if you have a product already, um, and as far as like doing some uh, giveaways to people like through, um, I know you guys use mini chat, but um, mm-hmm. is that definitely something that's absolutely needed? Is that optional? Um, and how yeah. does that even work? It's a... I would say it, it's an optional power tool in our belt. We don't use it in every application, but I mean, most cases, it's a great tool to have in your tool belt. It's, you know, it's a, it's like taking a jackhammer to it, <laughs> to, to the keyword ranking. There's some times where we're able to get it ranked just fine using Amazon's PPC uh, yeah. advertising. But if, if it's a, um, 
some of it has to do with your cost structures. Like if, if you have a high margin product, it's that's the best way to go is to do those what we call keyword launches mm -hmm. uh, where we're sending people basically to Amazon and saying, buy this and we'll give you a gift card for 100% rebate. And th there's a certain process to that that basically helps you rank for that keyword, uh, you know, in a proven way every time. Like we're mm -hmm. We're able to do that as long as it's a so long as it's a relevant keyword, mm -hmm. you'll shoot up to the top of the search results wow. for that keyword and stay there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think Abe yeah. on a webinar he did for my private label group, he said uh, that he uh, pretty much guarantees that he could get if somebody's willing to spend the money, they can. He he thinks he can rank for any product or any keyword. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. But the the key thing that he says is is keeping it at that stage. Like if you have something power. super competitive, it may be very expensive to keep it there. Um, mm -hmm. And you may not want to spend that money to do that, but. Yeah. But a lot of it's just breaking through and getting in that top, you know, top few organic placements on the keywords. Cause once you're there and you have the exposure, it, mm -hmm. if your product continues to convert, you'll stay there and yeah. you don't have to spend a ton of money once you're up there, That's but awesome. it's just, it's like thrusting you up to the top. But yeah. if it's an, if it's an irrelevant term, so like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's a, like if I'm doing salad dressing and it's barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. I can, I can guarantee I'll get you to the top of barbecue sauce, but it's not going to stay there. <laughs> right. Cause it's not, not relevant. because yeah, because it's not relevant and people yeah. are going to convert, they're not going to convert. Right. And so you'll yeah. just slip back down the page ranks. So, sure. so is there a certain number of keywords? Right keywords? Is there a certain number of keywords that you think somebody should be focusing on at a time? I mean, should you focus on 20 at a time with exact match, sir, exact match search or focus on three to be more focused? Or what do you think? Yeah, some of that just depends on your ad budget. And, yeah. you know, um, if, if you start small and build it up from there, you know, yeah. I, I don't, like I told you before, I'm a Dave Ramsey fan, so I don't like to waste money. I like to be sure. very intentional with the money. And so uh, yeah. I know that I know that you have to advertise to, yeah. um, to rank products, but I, I try to do that in as strategic of a way as possible mm -hmm. without waste. Um, yeah. So, so you you're basically, always grow um, how long do you, um, how long are you guys running ads? Because I know it's not like, I'm just going to run this forever because you're, you're running it mm -hmm. for a while, looking at the data and making sure, do I even want to keep doing this term? Do I want to raise the budget? Do I want to lower the budget? Mm -hmm. Do I want to change the term? Do you, I know, yeah. I think Abe talked about this some on the podcast too. Definitely the webinar. Yeah. Yeah. As far as like, we view things in terms of kind of a launch phase and then a management phase. So, mm -hmm. you know, launch phase is high engagement. You're always checking what are the yeah. bids at and what's the placement at. Once you get into management, we probably do once a week bid optimizations where we're, we're looking at how everything's converting and if it's too expensive or if it's not working well and change all the numbers and keep, it's a weekly monitoring. And at that sure. point you might decide some words don't convert. Let's stop advertising yeah. those words, but yeah. Um, That's yeah. good. Is there an Amazon cost of sales number that you guys shoot for? It's like, uh, it needs to be at this level before we even mess with it or keep it going. In terms of our, um, like, like that our, a cost number, you know, or is it, is it more like, you know, if it's profitable, I don't care. I'll run, I'll, I'll max that out and keep running to run yeah. it through because it's profitable. It's making me money. Um, Got it. Or is it? Yeah. We, we've, we've kind of looked a lot more at what we call tacos, not a cost. So uh, tacos uh, is total advertising cost of sale and it's your uh, ad spend divided by your top line sales. Because okay. if you're doing ads in a way that helps you rank for keywords, uh -huh. what'll happen is your organic sales will increase. Um, oh, whereas a, a cost is just looking at your ad sales. How much mm -hmm. of my ads, how much did I spend in making ads? Mm -hmm. But we're saying if you're doing ads in our opinion, the right way, you should be getting more organic sales happening. I don't want to okay. just keep buying sales. I want to yes. buy better placement that get me free sales. Right. There you go. Um, so that's um, that's looking at those numbers. So, which is saying that's more than like an ad budget. Like, so, okay, if 10% is kind of a normal, like target where we try to get to is that 10% of all of our sales, we spent that amount in ad spend. Um, that's yeah. pretty normal up to yeah. 15. If it, it depends on margins of each uh, product, right. Or brand that you're working with, but right. um, if it gets above that, you're, you're, you're eating all of your profits. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do that unless it's tacos no. though. That sounds kind of good. Oh, <laughs> we love tacos. <laughs> All right. Last question. Well, tell us, obviously, um, I mean, I know this is a lot of work. And so you guys, um, some people like love to dig into this. Like my um, buddy, Benji Laney, who does the piggy paste brand uh, with me, yeah. he, he um, 
uh, he loves digging into this type of stuff. Although I think after over the family reunion, he said he wants to actually just hire you guys to do it. But yeah. for those of us that are like, you know what, this is just like, woo, way over my head. I don't want to mess with it. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your and Abe's, uh, the options that you guys have and what you guys do for folks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I hired Abe as a coach. I did a second round of coaching and it was to learn those, the product launches, right? The keyword launches. Yeah. And like, I think after my first session, he said, Hey, we should start working together. <laughs> so wow. we had to partner together. I didn't even uh, finish my coaching with him, but I get to ask him questions every day. You so. get your money back from the coaching program then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should have, uh, uh, Nathan got the hotel room. So we're good. That's no, right. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, but as far as the, what we do, we kind of put it into two big buckets. One is just one-off services. So if you want us to help like make listings for you, we'll do all the keyword research and make listings for you, do all the image images and, um, and set up your ad campaigns and then hand it over to you. So, mm-hmm. and then we'll just quote out what that would be based sure. upon how much work that is. Mm-hmm. And then the other approach is brand management. And that's where we'll say, you know, um, You've got this product. You've got this Amazon account, and you don't. You want to take a more hands-off approach. We'll manage all the day-to-day stuff. We'll run all the ads. We'll we'll launch products. We'll add listings. We'll advise you on um, you know new products that you want to bring to market. We'll vet them, vet the keywords, and help you make the right decisions and mm-hmm. strategy and growth and reporting and all, all of that. And then do that for um, more that 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 revenue share model where yeah. we just earn a commission on it. Okay. And then that incentivizes us to grow your account because. Yeah. We're going to grow with you. And we're going to fall with you. And that's, um, that's awesome. yeah. So that's, we, I imagine we really with that, you have to be that. a little bit more picky. You're probably not going to be able to accept everybody for that. Cause you're looking for certain things that are going to be, you know, a good use of your time. Correct. And yeah. You feel so like not, you can add value to and, and actually launch it. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not every brand is going to be a good fit. We do genuinely try to look at it as a win-win, like sure. what's going to make sense. There, there's some people that we meet with them and tell them, Hey, let us just help build these couple of things for you. Then you can handle it from there. Or we'll yeah. say, we'll, we'll do a couple of sessions with you and train you how to do this. Yes. And um, so, yeah, that's cool. Just hear out what, what are your problems? How can we help? And, um, and two, what in this kind of brand management or product partnering side of the business product selection is, is key, but in this business um, picking your clients, client is, is just as key, if not more, because yes. I'm saying like, like if I'm coming to work for you, Ryan, I am, and partnering and managing your brand, like I'm joining your team. I'm going to be right. in frequent contact with you. Right. And there's got to be a relationship and a rapport and, and building trust sure. and whatnot. And uh, so I've, I've had some where the, the product was, was pretty good, but mm. the relationship just um, was tough or they're, you know, they were, they're skeptical the whole way. And it's right. just, it, it, it's hard to, um, it's hard to grow and to be creative uh, if that's the the relationship, so yeah, you know, sure. we look at it at both. What's the the products have to make sense, the keywords, but also uh, the the people side of it. Cool, and that's your site, onlinebizmomentum.com. dot com. Is that right? Yeah, online biz momentum. I'll have a link. Uh, I have a link in the show notes, guys, for that. Um, and I have a coupon code you guys can use as well. So cool, Jonathan. Yeah, Oh, go ahead. The, uh, oh, real quick, yeah, the coupon code you're talking about, that's that's for the those product launches, those keyword launches that we use, mini chat, a chat bot program for mm-hmm. that. We okay. have uh, all of our templates and SOPs and training videos and all of that that we just, um, so that's some, pe- some people come in, they want to do it for them or some we say, hey, here, here's here's all of our processes that we literally have our team follow and you can just take it and run with it and do it yourself. Awesome. Cool. And the link will be in the show notes there. Streams of income radio.com. I believe this is episode 94. So cool. Hey, Jonathan, any last advice? I think, you know, t- Tom, you know, talk to people who are just getting started in this and private label or just Amazon or just entrepreneurship in general. What are, what's some advice or encouragement you want to give them? Man. Um, the only thing I guess I could say would be the stuff that I heard other people say that I didn't follow. <laughs> Stuff like bolt don't bounce, right? Like I was so getting into this, I, I was building my own brand and I thought I want to start reselling too. And I'm doing right. arbitrage and then I'm wanting to do PPP, you know, right. trying to do too many things at once. Sure. And it, eventually you hit a wall and you say, I have to stop this. And uh, yeah. I, you know, so I've done that a few different times in, in yeah. this journey so far. Uh, and then also just, I mean, just how critical the relationships are. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you're not just sitting on a keyboard. It's, it is a relationship business, even if you only meet people at conferences in person. Right. Um, and uh, there's been some great friendships and partnerships formed out of uh, even just our Facebook group community and mm-hmm. uh, 
I wouldn't have thought that. So yeah, that's yeah. great advice. Thanks for being on with me, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. I'll give you give you an update soon. That sounds good. Thanks. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.